Thank you. I should say Swati Cup. It's fantastic to be here, and on behalf of Microsoft, it's a real privilege and honor to, to be with you this morning. I want to take about 15 minutes and talk about what Microsoft's doing to help companies digitally transform themselves. Because there's not a company out there today that's not really becoming a digital company. I'm going to share what we're doing from a strategy perspective, the products and services we're building, and then more importantly, talk about some customer examples where they're actually uh, transforming their business, both some external customers, and I'll give you some examples internally that we're doing ourselves that we're seeing real benefit there. In starting on the cloud here, I want to start with this view that we have at Microsoft around this concept of the intelligent cloud and intelligent edge. And I think there's every player out there talking about the intelligent cloud, and I think that makes sense. When you look at the sheer amount of compute and the fact that compute is everywhere, storage, network, intelligence, et cetera. And I think that makes sense in the cloud, and we're investing massively there. In fact, if you add the next two competitors up in terms of data centers in the cloud and regions, we have more data centers than the next two competitors involved. So we're investing massively to build out this scalable, intelligent, secure cloud. The second piece, though, that I don't think gets talked about as much is this intelligent edge. And this is where I think we have real unique differentiation, because you think about it, commute, compute and storage and intelligence doesn't just exist in the cloud in this new world, it has to exist on the edge. Whether it's on the devices you think about it today, your phones, your PCs, things like IoT. As an example, take connected car. The amount of data that a connected car puts off, that data actually has gravity. And so what we need to do is actually build compute, intelligence, machine learning, and the ability to execute on the edge. And our strategy is uniquely differentiated in not only building that capability in the cloud, but at the edge. And that's not just our collaboration and modern workplace tools, but it's the things like in artificial intelligence. It's supporting multi-devices. Doesn't matter. Windows is a part of it, but also a broader set of devices out there whether it's iOS, Android, IoT, et cetera. But that intelligence and compute and AI needs to not only exist in the cloud, but at the edge. And I think that's uniquely differentiated in terms of what we're doing, both in the intelligent cloud and intelligent edge. When we talk about digital transformation, there's really two things. The customers talk to us about the things on the right. And I think these are universal truths in business. Every customer wants to empower their employees. And quite frankly, what they're looking for is how do they make employees more productive? It's a key asset for any business. The second one is how do they engage customers in new and different ways and quite frankly, better ways? And I think in this digital transformation, this is a key area. We hear lots of customers saying, we want to connect with our customers in a more unique and better way. The third thing that customers talk to us about is uh, operational efficiency. This is really about how do we take costs out of the business. I think the cloud is a wonderful platform to help companies drive that business outcome and take costs out of the business. And then probably the one that we see the most discussion with customers today is, how do we actually transform our products or create new products and services with this cloud uh, capability? Because every company, if you will, is becoming a digital company. And I'll give some examples where we've taken some very traditional businesses and they've transformed themselves through these capabilities in the cloud. The things on the left side here, these are the things that are, our, I'll call them technical ingredients. These are the things Microsoft's investing in massively to enable these business outcomes on the right. And there's four areas, and obviously we're talking a lot about Azure today, but the first one is what we call modern workplace. Modern workplace is all around how do we provide the broadest, most comprehensive, secure set of collaboration tools on the planet to really do two things, unlock creativity, of individuals and groups, and also uh, basically create connection and teamwork within organizations. But it's a huge focus for us across our product groups, whether it's Windows, Office, Surface, and our security products, to create that broad set of collaboration and communication tools. The second one is our business applications, and this is probably the least known business within Microsoft. The way I describe this, our product view, or product line is Microsoft Dynamics 365. This is really about having the most adaptable and flexible platform to help any company modernize their business processes. 
whether it's in sales, customer support, field service, finance operations, or talent management. Those are the areas that we're focused on and really looking at an end-to-end -end view in terms of how we help customers modernize their business processes. And then the third one is apps and infrastructure, and this is really all about Azure. And the way I describe this to customers is we have the most open, most secure, and the only company that has an integrated hybrid platform uh, to enable different scenarios in the cloud. And we're making huge investments in this. And if you just take it from even a hybrid perspective, there's not a company out there that I think will move everything to the cloud. Whether it's certain applications, whether it's company requirements, government requirements, et cetera, there's applications that require on-prem, there's some that can go to the cloud, and then you need this hybrid capability. We're the only ones that provide a true hybrid capability from on-prem to in the cloud to have a common application layer, management layer, and security layer across that on-prem and cloud uh, connection. And then the fourth one is what we call data and AI. And quite frankly, AI seems to get all the headlines today. But what I would talk about here is I think we're the only company on the planet that really looks at everything from your data state to your analytics to AI and machine learning as well as cognitive services. And the thing that we talk to customers a lot about is they want to talk about artificial intelligence, which is a fantastic enabler to the business. But artificial intelligence only becomes real if you have that data state in order. And so everything we're doing in the cloud today starts with that data layer and then gets infused with analytics and AI across the platform. But this is where we're making huge investments uh, in the Azure product line moving forward. What I thought I'd do is just give you a couple examples where customers are actually using this technology to transform their business. So as I do this, as I talked about Azure, I think the differences that we've talked about, what makes us uniquely different in this one. First of all, Microsoft's the only one that plays in this infrastructure as a service layer, platform as a service layer, and then software as a service layer. Those are big bets and investments we're making, but I think it uniquely positions us. We've talked about the open, secure, and hybrid capabilities there. And then again, this data-driven intelligence. We're infusing AI in everything we're doing across the platform. And the last one, I talk about security a lot, but it's really the trust that we're trying to drive uh, with our customers in this space. So I'll give you a couple examples where we're actually using this. And I thought this was an interesting one, since everyone can, can relate to beer in some form or fashion. But we worked with Carlsberg Beer you know, which is a very traditional business. And you say, how can a beer company transform their business? They've done a couple things. The first one is, internally, they wanted to look at how they made their employees more productive. So they've implemented the Office 365 suite of products. They're moving to things like teams, great teamwork and collaboration. But they're trying to do two things there. One, make employees more productive. But the second thing is, how do they create a new platform to recruit and retain the new generation workforce, which has a high, very high bar in terms of what they want for collaboration and communication tools. But more importantly, what they wanted to use is the cloud technology, particularly Azure, to reinvent their business. And so they've done really two things there. The first thing they've done in the beer making process, they've put sensors, IoT sensors, in all their vats. And what they've done is improved the ability in terms of yeast fermentation in the beer business, which is very important, to actually get it down and be more scientific in terms of what's the optimal yeast fermentation, which improves the quality of beer but it has also allowed them to go experiment with new flavors and tastes and test those in the market with a higher degree of accuracy and precision in terms of targeting those customers. But the third thing that they did is they looked and said, we want to evolve our business just from being a beer manufacturer to what they say today is beer as a service. When you first hear that, you say beer as a service. But basically what they've done is the places that they're distributing the beers, and let's call it a bar, restaurant, et cetera, they've put sensors in those distribution machines. And what those sensors now allow Carlsberg to do is provide a service back to those entities. Things like they can tell the customer for a certain type of beer, you're not cooling that beer at the degree it needs to. You need to chill that at two degrees more. That's the optimal temperature to serve that beer. 
The second thing is they're monitoring the consumption of the beer at that local entity and looking at different statistics and saying there's a certain beer that's not being consumed as much as projected and they're coming back and helping the bartenders or, or restaurant owners with promotional activities to actually drive that. And so the way they look at it is they're evolving from a beer manufacturer to as an always on service. We're not only providing the beer, but they're providing a service to help those owners improve their uh, revenue production, margin production, and the value chain that Carlsberg's doing. And so I look at it and say, if a beer company like Carlsberg can transform their business, almost any company uh, can transform their business. The second example I want to talk about is one we're using internally. So I have a group of about 2,000 people globally in an inside sales call center that does both inbound and outbound calls. And one of the challenges that we had was our digital marketing, what we call our global demand center, was creating incredible marketing that was driving lots of opportunities in the top that we called marketing qualified leads. And ultimately, we want to work that through the process. And at the bottom, we want revenue to come out. The challenge we had is there was a lot of opportunities and prospects at the top, but the amount of revenue that flowing out the bottom was very small. And what we saw is we had very expensive resources in our call center calling into opportunities that weren't as highly qualified as we'd want. And they were struggling with how do they focus on the most qualified opportunities? Quite frankly, how do they find those most qualified opportunities. So we worked with our artificial intelligence team. We got some of the product people to invest with us. And they basically created something called Deep CRM. It's an internal project that we've done. It's about six months in the, the making. But what Deep CRM does is goes through all those qualified leads, and it disqualifies those that don't have a valid phone number, those that don't have a valid email, and then it looks through a set of activities, both internal signals and external signals, to figure out what's the most highly qualified leads, and it maps those then to our call center individuals. But it takes it one step further. It looks at that qualified opportunity, and let's say for an example, that's an Azure opportunity. It knows the people in our call center who are the best at selling Azure, and it routes those leads to them. If the lead was around Office 365, it would route those to the people who are having the most success with Office 365. And so what's happened here is you look at this deep CRM, they've gone through the reasoning, the understanding, and then the interaction to help us in terms of engage with those customers in a much more efficient way. I will tell you this is six months in the making, so it's very early, but I want to share with you the, the things that we're seeing internally. So our conversion rate on opportunities, 42% improvement with deep CRM. And by the way, when you do this, the important thing that we did is we had a control group that didn't have deep CRM, and we had another group that was using deep CRM, so we could use the, the comparisons here. But those that had deep CRM, our conversion rate went up 42%. That's an incredible impact to the bottom line. More importantly is our deal size increased 65%. So the average size of deals we were working with deep CRM went up 65%. And then the age of opportunity, so the time it took from when we engaged to close an opportunity, that time has decreased by 11%. Those things I'm telling you for our business is a massive impact. Now, what I would tell you, it's early days in this. We're still evolving it and building it. But this wasn't something that took us a year to build. We got engaged with some developers, we looked at it, and there's some really low-hanging fruit in terms of our ability to drive this. We're also doing the same thing with our customer support. So we get about 600,000 customer support tickets a month. As you can imagine, the sheer scale of the business we have. We have outfitted our Microsoft.com support site on the front end with a new agent or chatbot that basically looks at what are the most common elements uh, that are coming through. And what we've done there is we've been able to reduce our support call volume by about 8 to 
We've improved customer satisfaction on those interactions, and quite frankly, that same agent and bot we're using, our customer support agents are using that same technology. So it has machine learning in there and AI, so it continues to get smarter and smarter involved. We're gonna be able to continue to take the cost down and, and redeploy those in the most valuable areas, and at the same time, increasing customer satisfaction. That's really transformational for a business. So those gives you a couple ideas of how both customers like Carlsberg are using it and how we're using it in our own business to, to transform your business. And I think we have an opportunity to do that in every company that we're working with and moving to becoming a, a digital uh, company. So I want to take the time to thank you. I want to give you my email address here as well. If there's anything that you have that we can help you with, please reach out and communicate. We really want to work with you. We appreciate you being here and can't thank you enough for the investment that you've made. And so with that, Kapkum Kump, thank you very much.